Rated E for everyone, 10 and up. I'd like to thank you for coming and watching my video for how to fight with the BF-110. In most cases, you want to get altitude, come down on any time you want to come on to a target. In this particular case, coming up on a DB-7, caught up to it pretty quickly, got a good shot on the pilot. The main areas you want to shoot for on any plane is going to be starting with the pilot, then the engines, the fuselage, wing roots where there's fuel tanks or behind the seats where there's a fuel tank, and of course ammo packs which are located in usually in the wheel wells. Also you have uh, vital control services. In this particular case, the whole back end of that plane was sheared off using both uh, machine guns and cannons. The BF-110 has four forward-facing machine guns, which fire 7.92 round, and it also has two 20mm cannons. Now, setting convergence is important on this because if, if you set the convergence at 340 meters, then you uh, have the rounds arcing out in front of the plane so that their bullets are meeting with both the cannons and the MGs right at the center of the reticle. A lot of people think, oh, because it's center line, it doesn't mean have anything to do with convergence. That's totally wrong. Uh, they do converge at that point and then they begin to spread out from there. As they spread out further beyond that 340 meters, then it, it becomes like a shotgun blast, whether it's cannon rounds or machine guns. And uh, so that uh, shooting at long distance targets, then you have a better chance of making a hit uh, uh, with a shotgun type blast. Now you see in this clip, I shot at a 520. Didn't really get a very good hit on him but there were several other planes in the area, so I extended out and didn't try to turn on it. Because that would have slowed me way down, and of course I would have been overrun by several other enemy planes. As you can see, a, a Hurricane and a 520 are still getting chased. The Hurricane came in from quite a bit of altitude, so he's gaining on me quickly. So I extended out far enough so that I have plenty of time to get myself turned around and get uh, back into the fight here, and uh, maybe get a, a chance to get a shot on this Hurricane. And as in this particular case, I was able to get turned around just in the nick of time, get some f shots on him, and then I pulled back on the stick as hard as I could to get out of his way. He uh, ended up clipping the tail end of my airplane and exploding. Now the 110 is really good at being able to do a hard rudder kick, getting a snapshot on targets. So you have to be prepared to be able to do that. And of course that comes in with familiarizing yourself with the way the plane handles and what you can do can and cannot do with it. In this particular sequence, I'm coming in trying to get a good shot on this particular D520. Uh, roll in, start firing out ahead of him. There, I, it's a blind shot, so I'm just managing to you know make a few little blinks here and there. But again, I take another chance to uh, get a good shot on him. I roll in. As you can see here, a, an enemy hawk comes through in flames. Uh, somebody shot him down up above me. And then I continued diving in on the, on the 520, firing a few machine gun rounds to try to line him up a little bit and get him a few planes to get him to turn. The more I can get him to turn, the slower he's going to go and it gives me a chance to catch up to him. Right there, I did an arcing shot on him, killed, got a pilot shot, and uh, his plane's going down. Now this particular shot coming up is uh, one of the most access pilots like their, one of their favorites. It's catching up to a Blenheim, breaking them from their engines through the wing roots and over to the other side. It was able to set both wing tanks on fire and put him down. Uh, the pilots themselves are pretty well protected so you have to get them at, at a pretty good steep angle, uh, either above or from the side. Now this is a 520 that I got shot a little bit earlier and uh, had wounded his plane a little bit and was trying to make it home. I had uh, gained some altitude and then came diving back in and finished off by taking the back end of his plane off. And again, uh, most times when you're coming into an area where there's a lot of enemy air, you want to make sure you have a lot of friends. And 110 by itself is basically a dead plane. Uh, when you get into a group of planes, then the enemy has to uh, you know, be worried about where they're going, who they're shooting at. But if you can come through and pick up a plane that's not paying attention, such as that one right there, he was uh, following the uh, one of our guys up in the air, up into the sky, and as he was climbing, it slowed him down, and as he makes a turn, every time I see somebody making a banking turn is when I want to make my shot. There's that devastating fire with the 
machine guns and the cannons right in the face of the spit that was coming towards me. That there was a shot where uh, I could see that the hawk was climbing, he was making a hard banking uh, loop turn. I was able to fire out in front of him, he just flew right through the stream of bullets like, a, like going through a waterfall. And I tried to get the center of the plane, of course I took him out since the fuel tank was right, he was right in front of the uh, windshield of the, of the cockpit and that's what exploded and caught on fire. These rest of these shots throughout the rest of the video here are just uh, trying to get in, getting shots of the pilots. That one there was a, a, a side angle shot and uh, I was pretty sure I got in but I wasn't you know, 100 percent and that was just with machine guns only so I didn't see any puffs of cannon rounds so it was hard to tell. So I rolled over followed him and he had gone straight into the ground. This is a 520 that was coming up at an angle. I just did a quick snapshot on him, took him out. Coming in here on this one is a, a Hawk. I could see that he was uh, smoking a little bit. He was already damaged. I had hit him a little bit before, and uh, I just basically followed him just to make sure that he was going down. Here I'm diving in on top of a Hurricane. It's a Hurricane 2B, and uh, got some shots on him as he was climbing up. Again, is that flat surface as they're climbing or turning or banking. Those flat surfaces are ones you want to shoot for. This one here was a spit that was diving or climbing on me, going really fast. He came in from a high altitude, went down low, and came back up. I got some hits on him in his face and slowed him down. And all I did was continue flying on as fast as I could in, in the opposite direction, got away from him. Same thing here with this one. I dove in on a 520, didn't really get a good hit on him, but I continued using my speed that I had from a uh, game before from diving. I was able to get some shots on him with my tail gunner, but I could see I wasn't going to get away. So I turned back underneath him, did a uh, split S with a corkscrew underneath so that he could miss me. And then I reversed back to the right so that uh, as he came back to his left, uh, again, he's going too fast, can't make a shot. And at the same time, he's probably blacked out and uh, can't see where I'm gone. I extended away from him to the point where I was just basically a halo. He couldn't find me. He, was, he did a couple of turns looking around. And here I... I jumped a little further forward. After I kind of caught back up to him, he wasn't uh, really paying much attention, and I did some long distance shots. He got all uh, nervous and started flopping his plane all over the place, thinking he had somebody right on top of him. And usually, since I can't catch them, I shoot them with a uh, machine gun bullets from a long distance away. They think somebody's on top of them. They start turning and flipping and flopping and twisting, slows their plane down, and gives me a chance to catch up. Uh, in this particular case, once he's realized that it was just a 110 on him, uh, he could have uh, just dove away and just flown away from me, but he didn't think about that. In this particular case, he didn't know what, uh, what his opponent plane could do. Since I'm much slower than he is, and I can't turn as fast as he can, uh, if, if I can keep him going slow, then I can basically match him maneuver for maneuver. In this particular case, he's uh, wasting his energy by doing his banking turns and scissors and stuff, and then he does these uh, flops, which are definitely something he doesn't want to do so it allows me to get much much closer to him because when he doesn't flop like that it's basically like putting a big air brake on in this particular case I'm just kind of staying with him I don't have enough airspeed to really pull up on him but he doesn't really realize that uh, again he doesn't know what his, the, uh, his opponent can do so therefore uh, he, he's made several mistakes here instead of extending away or continuing to do his climb in a, in a banking turn, he tried to, to level off to get some speed, and of course I was able to get some more hits on him. Right there you saw a friendly came into view. He thought that I was in trouble, so he came to come help help work with me. And uh, in this particular case, he doesn't realize that I'm making a video. <laughs> so um, I'm going to have to try and get in there and get the shot, get the kill, just for the video's sake, because I don't need it for points, because I've maxed out my rank anyway. Um, but I want to show what, I, what you can do and how to do it. I follow him down as he uh, does all these little arcing turns. Again, I shoot out ahead of him, make him blind shots. You can see a pump of cannon rounds. I get in real close to him as he slows down and overshoot him just a little bit. So I come back around, extend out to the side, pull a uh, little serpentine, come back in, and uh, get some shots on him again. And as he's uh, trying to get away, it uh, allows me, as I dive in, catch up to him and uh, he's been whittled down uh, I fired you know, a couple thousand rounds of bullets at this guy so his plane's uh, pretty well 
Snooker didn't get him going anywhere fast. I catch up to him and blow him up. Now that sequence was a couple patches back, and uh, back then we were having a little trouble, uh, you know, tearing enemy planes apart for whatever reason. And uh, so it, uh, it seemed to be doing a little bit better now. Again, this one I started at 4K, dove down, came back up underneath a spit that was climbing. He was about uh, 3.5K. Uh, came up underneath and fired at the center fuselage and went right underneath the pilot's back seat and he exploded. Coming in on this one, I do a hard rudder kick, pulling the plane so that I get some shots on him. Got the pilot kill and he exploded. This one I had a Hawk uh, H75, one of those ones that turns like a bat out of hell. Uh, he was uh, uh, duking it out with a friendly. I could see that he was going to do an arc, arc loop up over the top, so I just got ready and as he came by, shot him in the belly and took him out. This one here, I had already done one pass on this hurricane. I came, came up and uh, did a loop, came back around, and uh, finished taking him out. And I had originally started this sequence at about 4K altitude and diving down. Here I came in from about 3.5K, had a hurricane down on the deck, do a little rudder kick to the side, make sure that the front of my plane's basically lined up with him. When I released the rudder, I lined it up and I did a quick uh, one second burst, and it was right into his wing tank and he exploded. And basically the same sort of thing with that one there. And again, these guys are armored to the rear, but if you can get them into the, the wing roots and the uh, engine pods, uh, can basically take them out. I got some hits on this fast-moving hurricane. Uh, got him smoking, but I know he's not hurt all that bad. He just didn't know where I was coming from. I saw that he was banking left, so I banked right, so it maintained my speed. I didn't do a hard turn. It was more of a, a flat turn. Then I leveled off and looked back over my shoulder, and uh, he turned around and tried to come back after me. And uh, I just basically arced around him as he had already lost speed you know, with his hard banking turns. I noticed that there's a 520 that was coming towards me from a long ways away with a lot of E. I got some uh, shots on him in the face. You see right there a spit just went right past my windscreen. So he was lining up on me as well. Fortunately, since I was doing a hard banking turn, he wasn't able to keep, keep guns on me. I uh, turned back around on the 520, and he was uh, uh, attempting to make an escape. I got some long distance shots on him. He did a real hard nose dive, which of course blacked him out. I started to follow and do the same thing, and I realized, oh, wait a minute, he's going to be un unconscious for a few seconds. So I was able to slide in underneath him and uh, finish him off with some shots to his underside of his tail there. In this final sequence, I have a hawk that is climbing up, and I'm coming down. I just get my nose out in front of him, start firing blind, but in anticipation of where he's going to be, and I was able to explode him as I came through. And again, thank you for watching my video for the BF-110.